It's time for episode four of Harry Potter and You. Welcome back to Comedy Hall. I am Mark Zilber and this is Harry Potter and You. It's kind of like the community driven choose your own adventure kind of thing. And we are going to follow uh, the Harry Potter books and we get to play our own character who's just some random person in the background. Or maybe not. So in the last episode, we voted uh, for uh, the order of the shops. Now, Harry had an order, which is based on canon. Draco had an order, which is partly based upon canon. Uh, and then made up some of it because, well, just kind of had to. It wasn't there. Uh, and then he voted, and then we see where we got hits or misses. The way the voting worked was that uh, I probably should have asked a different way, but anyway. <laughs> there were seven... Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. There were eight questions, uh, and you had to answer. The drop down was the same with the full list of shops, and you had to kind of pick your favourites. And then as we worked down the list, if it was the already selected and a question above, it would be the next one down. So here are the results. We have Olive Adler's in the first place, uh, Madame Malkin's Robes, Pottage's Cauldron Shop, Slug and Jigger's Apothecary, Scribblers Writing Instruments. That was tied with Flourish and Blots, but Flourish and Blots were run the next one down. So the next one is Flourish and Blots. That was second place to Slug and Jigger's, which was already selected above. Was the careers Wizarding Equipment? That was second place again to Pottage's Cauldron Shop and Owlop's Eye Emporium, or the Menag Magical Menagerie, depending on what pet you chose. The pet you chose was the owl, naturally. So it will be the Owlops Eye Emporium. So this is how our story goes. I promise the questions are easier to answer this one. <laughs> so the story is set. We have just left Gringotts. And uh, Professor McGonagall says, where shall we go? So you take a look at the list of items you need for school and discuss the options with Professor McGonagall. So this just leaves either Owlops Eye Emporium or Magical Menagerie for your pet. What would you like, dear? says Professor McGonagall, after some time. I would love an owl. Toes sound a bit useless, and well, I'm more of a dog person than a cat person. For some reason, that Professor... <laughs> For some reason, the Professor looks slightly offended, but you have no idea how. So you want your wand first. We must go to Ollivander's. You and your parents follow in the Professor's wake, as the busy street full of people seems to part around her. She must be well respected. The giant man from Gringotts was just walking away from Madame Malkin's robes for all occasions, alone this time. He nods to Professor McGonagall as you pass. He looked a bit ill, almost like he'd been on a roller coaster. After a few minutes, you arrive at Ollivander's. Peeling old letters over the door read Ollivander's, makers of fine wands since 382 BC. A single wand lay on a faded purple cushion in the dusty window. Professor McGonagall turns to you and says, Your parents and I will stay outside. It is best without a crowd when being chosen by your wand. I thought I was choosing my wand, not the other way around, you reply. You'll see, says the professor, and points you inside. You open the door and a bell rings in the distance. There is a small chair in the corner of the room and a counter. The shop is small and is much like a very quiet and dusty library, except instead of books there are thousands of narrow but long boxes stacked up to the ceiling. It's certainly not a shop designed for browsing. Good afternoon, came a softly spoken voice. You jump as the man appears from the back of the room. An old man with wide, pale eyes stands before you. I've come to choose my wand, I think, you say. Muggleborn, I see, replies Ollivander. How did you know that? It's well known that the wand chooses the wizard. Also, Professor McGonagall is standing right outside and she only escorts Muggleborns. Don't worry, you're in safe hands here. You start to think... Why coming from a muggle family should make you worry when Ollivander pulls a long tape measure with silver markings out of his pocket? Which is your wand arm? I guess it's my right. That's what I write with, you reply. Ollivander takes a breath and says, Every Ollivander wand has a core of a power magical substance. We use unicorn hairs, phoenix tail feathers and the heartstrings of dragons. No two Ollivander wands are the same, just as no two unicorns, dragons or phoenixes are quite the same. And of course, you will never get such good results with another wizard's wand. Ollivander pulls your right arm out straight. The tape misses you from shoulder to finger, then wrist to elbow, shoulder to floor, knee to armpit, round your head and in between your nostrils. 
all on its own. Ollivander rummages around the shelves using a ladder to reach up high. He pulls out several boxes while he talks to himself. Try this one, he says. Maple and Phoenix Feather. Seven inches, quite whippy. You pick it up and fill it in your hand, but Ollivander grabs it again. No, no. Here, try this. Just nut and unicorn hair. Ten inches, nice and supple. As you pick up this wand, something feels different. There's a sudden warmth in your fingers. As you raise the wand, red sparks jump out like fireworks. Ollivander claps and cries, oh bravo, yes indeed, very good. I'll be interested to see what magic you both get up to. Ollivander puts the wand back in its box and wraps it in brown paper. Now remember, you must not do magic outside of school, Ollivander says. You hand over seven gold galleons and can't help but leave a smile on your face as Professor McGonagall and your parents beam at you. One down. The rest are a bit quicker. Next you head to Madame Malkin's robes for all occasions. As you and your parents enter the shop, you are greeted by Madame Malkin, who is a squat, smiling witch dressed in light bubble. Before you can say anything, she says, Hogwarts, dear, got the lot here. It's very busy, time for new students. Had three today already. One young lady being fitted up just now, in fact. At the back of the shop, behind a set of curtains, was a girl with curly chest-length golden hair with a pink bow. She was standing on a footstool as a second witch struggled to pin up her long robes. She was bouncing up and down in barely contained excitement. Madame Malkin stands you on a stool next to her, slips a long robe over your head and begins to pin it to the correct length. Hi, she says excitedly. Is it your first time at Hogwarts too? Yes, you reply. I have no idea what it's like, do you? Only from what my parents have said. I hear divination is fun, but you can't do that until your third year. Charm sounds fun though. Divination? Charms? You have a puzzled look on your face as you realise you probably won't be doing humanities or geography ever again. Seeing your puzzled face, the girl says, My name is Lavender. Lavender Brown. You tell her your name and Lavender just squeals in excitement. Ooh, maybe we'll be in the same house. I just can't wait. Before you can answer that you're more terrified than excited, Madame Malkin says, That's you done, my dear. You head out around the curtain to show off your fancy new robes to your parents, who smile at you broadly. A slight tear in your mum's eyes. You pay and head out of the shop with your new robes. Do down. You head into Pottage's golden shop, Slug and Jicker's apothecary and Scribulous writing instruments, where you find a rather nice quill made with an eagle feather. You are surprised to hear there are so many types, including self-inking quills. I can write the every shop that would take forever. But needless to say, nothing really happens in those ones. Next, you head to Flourish and Blots. The shop is filled from floor to ceiling with books, ranging from postage stamps to paving slabs in size. The smell of paper fills your nostrils and calms your nerves. As you browse around looking for your books, you spot some really scary titles. I wonder if there's a dark side to the magic you haven't seen yet. You walk out with A History of Magic by Bethilda Bashot, Magical Theory by Albert Waffling, A Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration by Emmerich Switch, or One Thousand Magical Herbs and Fungi by Philida Spore, Magical Drafts and Potions by Arsenius Jigger, which I can never guess that right. Fantastic piece of where to find them by Newt's Commander, The Dark Forces, A Guide to Self-Protection by Quentin Trimble. As you walk into Wizzaker's wizarding equipment, there's a vast array of scales, telescopes, globes and star charts. With Professor McGonagall preferring to stay outside, you browse with your parents. There's a boy and his father also shopping. He has short, white blonde hair that matches his father's in colour, but not in length. The father's hair was straight and came halfway down his back in length. They didn't look particularly friendly. Your parents are busy handing over the money for your shopping. As you pick up your telescope, crystal files and brass scales, you accidentally bump into the boy. He and his father look down their noses at you. The father says to the boy, not to worry, Draco. Looks like there's at least one mudblood coming to Hogwarts this year. As you leave the shop, Professor McGonagall says, Our final stop is Alops I Emporium for your owl. You all walk down the street and pass a giant man and a spectacled boy. Oh, good afternoon, Professor. I didn't know you were escorting new students today, said the giant man. Good afternoon, Hagrid, said the Professor. All going well with our young Mr. Potter? As they continue their discussion, you are impressed that the Professor can remember new students' names already. You arrive at Alops Owl Emporium and the first thing that hits you is the smell. It's rather potent. There's a vast array of owls on barn owls, screech owls, tawny, brown, and many more. Finally, you choose a rather cute looking brown fish owl. What would you like to call him, says your father? I have no idea. I'll have a think after dinner. The whole day has been exhausting. Professor McGonagall congratulates you on your new purchases. Here's your train ticket to Hogwarts, King's Cross, platform nine and three quarters on the 1st of September. 
It's between platforms 9 and 10. If you have any questions, send a letter with your owl, they will do the rest. You take the professor's word about the platform number, as you've never got the train there before. You all depart for home, feet aching and more than a little excited to see what that new one can do. Later in the evening, after dinner, you look at your owl and think, what do I call them? You also look at your new books. Perhaps you'll read one tonight. One particular book takes your fancy. So this is a little different. The voting will be open uh, until Monday and then the following Monday. The way it works is what do you want to call your owl and which book stands out to you? So there's two questions. Now, what do you want to call your owl? We're basically going to be a free text field. You write down a name for your owl and then what we'll do after Monday, uh, we'll then vote on the favourite name. Okay, so that's how it's going to work. So we'll do a short list of the names. If there are way too many, I might have to shortlist them. Let's see how we go. Uh, and then basically the next one is the drop down list of which book stands out to you. You can probably see where this is going. So the books are A History of Magic by Mathilda Bagshot, a Magical Theory by Albert Waffling, A Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration by Emric Switch, 1000 Magical Herbs and Fungi by Phila de Spore, <laughs> Magical Drafts and Potions by Arsene Jigger, <laughs> I can never say that properly, Fantastic Beasts, A Weird Divider by Dudes Gabada, Dark Forces, A Guide to Self-Protection by Quentin Trimble. Yes, this bit will be open until Monday, and then another week of voting for the owl name after that. It's behind me a bit of breathing room to write the next part. Next part will be platform nine three quarters. I've got a few things planned for the train, uh, so that'd be quite cool. As it's like an eleven hour journey or something stupid. That's no, not. It's like a nine hour journey. I think I worked it out once. So thanks to everyone who voted. Uh, you managed to miss on. You managed to miss Harry Potter on all occasions. Uh, I'm not quite sure how you managed to do that, but you did. Um, but at least you did get to see Draco. You managed to match with him once. It would have been awkward if you matched with him more than once. So those were the only two I had down for various locations. So the only two were doing canon, which were shopping on the day. Um, so yes, the book can be important, or will be important. Um, I have some pretty cool stuff planned. So yep, yeah, get results in by Monday, and then the following week we'll be voting on the owl. So hopefully you enjoyed that one. Join on the Discord for the written version as well. I'm thinking about putting it onto something like uh, one of these writing uh, websites. It's fly for me, can't remember the name of right now. Which might be a bit easier than doing it in Google Docs all the time. So, yeah. So, until next time. See you around.